What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and another part in replacing the timing chain on my N47 engine. So then, in the last video you saw that I completely removed the engine from the car, I brought it into the garage, I cleaned it all down and now it is ready for stripping down and taking whatever needs taken off to access the three chains that I will be replacing. Okay then, so this is how the engine is currently looking. Obviously a lot of things we need to take off before we can access the timing chain. So this is going to be pretty much me just stripping down the engine, everything that needs to be removed. Probably going to start off a bit with removing the glow plug module, which is this thing here. That obviously has its own uh, power cable and then it has the um, plugs for the glow plugs themselves. That just goes around there. And uh, so I'll just remove that. Uh, obviously taking the clutch and flywheel off, have to remove the rocker cover, which will mean having to remove the injectors, the fuel rail, and uh, everything else that's on top of there. And then once the rocker cover is off, we'll then have access to the camshafts and we'll be able to lock them. Um, and then I think it is gonna be a case of removing the uh, timing cover. I'll probably have to remove the high pressure fuel pump first, which I think is access underneath there. Okay then, so I think first thing I'm going to do is remove the glow plug module. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts holding this complete bracket on. And that comes with the wiring loom and the power cable as well. I'm not gonna bother disconnecting them all now. Just take these two 10 mils out. And that's the other one out and then the whole thing should come out and there we go okay and so the next thing we're going to remove is the clutch and flywheel obviously the first thing you need to do is remove the clutch uh, pressure plate which is held in by some six millimeter allen bolts uh, but obviously if you just go to undo the bolts you know the flywheel is just going to spin but that's why you have a flywheel locking tool now if you have a look around here, this plug should be in place in that hole just there. And that, that's actually the hole that you put the flywheel locking tool in. So that just goes through there. And then it should line up with a slot on the flywheel then. So that should then slot through. And there you go. And now the uh, flywheel's locked. It can't move now. the clutch off okay then so this is the clutch removed then uh, as you can see it still has quite a lot of life left in it this was actually replaced at uh, 80,000 miles and the car is currently on around 120 so obviously it's only covered uh, 40,000 miles so it makes no sense to replace the clutch at this point it's obviously a lot easier to replace the clutch than you know the timing chain because I can just drop the gearbox down and replace the clutch I don't have to you know take the whole engine out uh, the flywheel as well that was replaced at 80,000 miles uh, and this should be good it has no movement in or anything so obviously you're just going to leave that as it is um, to remove it there is one two three four five six seven eight and that looks like a T, I'm gonna guess T55 bolts. So I'm probably gonna get the uh, the impact wrench on that and then uh, take them out. Now these bolts are a T60 and I'm gonna go attempt to remove them with the small impact wrench. If this doesn't work, obviously I've got a big one as well. So we'll uh, try and get that on it. Okay, that's the first one out. Okay, 
Okay then, so flywheel is off, all eight bolts are out. Okay then, so I've actually put the engine down on the floor and it's just resting on some blocks of wood, so it can't go anywhere. Obviously it's still hooked on to the engine crane just for extra security. Uh, but I think the next thing I'm going to remove is the rocker cover. I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this stage. I don't want to go ahead and remove the um, timing cover yet because obviously once I've removed that the chains and everything will be exposed and I want to keep any dirt and everything out of the uh, timing cover. I won't be doing that today, that'll be um, on a later date. So um, yeah, I'm going to keep the timing cover on um, but I can uh, get the rocker cover ready and take the injectors out, all these um, clamps and everything, the um, fuel rail or the fuel lines and um, unbolt the rocker cover then I can just leave it um, sat on the top so that's the plan and um, yeah we'll see how we get on. Okay so first thing I'm going to do to remove the fuel rail is just remove these clamps it's just two E10 bolts holding each of these clamps on once I've removed them I'll then be able to get a spanner on these 19 millimeter um, kind of like nuts that hold the hold the fuel lines on. I'll just remove this one first, the one that goes to the high pressure fuel pump and then I will go ahead and remove the rest and obviously I'll get to the injectors and everything then. Now, I'm just going to work my way along the fuel rail and uh, unscrew all of these. Oh, these are not doing up to at all, are they? You'd think with them being such high pressure that they would need to be done up like pretty tight, but it didn't seem to be the case. Okay then, so we have a little problem. Well, it's it's not really a problem. It's something that I should have expected, to be honest. Um, well, because the there is no obviously no clamps holding the injectors in anymore, in theory, the injectors should now just simply pull out. You know, they should just pull out now um, of the injector wells. But because there's probably so much like carbon and whatever else holding them in place, um, this is simply stuck, so I think what I'm going to actually have to do is remove these uh, fuel lines and um, and then either try twisting them or uh, get a slide hammer, um, screw them onto the thread, screw the slide hammer onto the thread and then obviously keep sliding until it, until it yanks out, but these are pretty solid um, as far as now is concerned, so yeah, I think what I'm going to do is unscrew these uh, fuel lines off the injectors themselves and then see how we're looking then. Okay, so I actually cannot find my uh, slide hammer at the moment. It might have to be something that I leave for today, the injectors, um, but obviously I can remove the fuel rail now. There's nothing holding that in, so I'm gonna take that out. Okay, so I think in the meantime, while I you know, try to find the slide hammer. I think what I'll actually do is remove the bolts for the rocker cover. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the inside of it. And then on the outside, that one down there looks like 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17. So let's get them off and then we will see if simply lifting the rocker cover will allow us to get the injectors out. 
Okay, that's just the ring that actually sits around the uh, oil filler cap and that will allow me to get to this bolt and obviously that bolt as well down there. So I think I can probably put this back on. Yeah, I can put that back on. I don't know if the socket's going to fit actually. Okay then, so I've just found out that my E10 socket will not actually fit down these tight holes where some of these uh, E10 bolts are. Um, so what I've got is just a standard 8mm socket which is actually a perfect fit for the E10 bolt and uh, should pretty much do the same job so I'm just going to be careful that I don't round it off. They're not doing up tight at all. Okay then, so I'm just going to call it a day for now. Um, until I get the slide hammer for the injectors, I don't think the injectors are going to come out and I don't think the rocket cover is going to come off, so we'll wait until we get the slide hammer. Okay then, so actually managed to find the slide hammer. This is what it looks like. It's only a homemade thing, but it actually does the job pretty well. So on the one end, it has a tapped thread which actually just screws on to the top of the injectors and then it has this uh, weight on here which obviously you slide up hit against there and it works just as a slide hammer should okay, so that's on there tight then Okay then, so finally managed to get the injectors loose. These things were in, you know, so tight that it just took a lot of persistence with the with the slide hammer. And these these things are not actually held in place, um, you know, with anything other than those clamps that we've already taken off. You know, there's a little copper washer on the bottom, but that's not um, anything that should really, um, you know, really hold them in place. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, they are loose and removed now. So I'm going to remove them and then put the fuel um, pipes back on because you need to keep the injectors in order. I'm pretty sure they're coded to each cylinder, so do not mix them up. If you take out cylinder one, make sure it goes back in in cylinder one. So I'm going to just take them all out now, um, put the pipes back on them, and, uh, and then I will just fill the holes with some tissue paper. Okay then, so now that all of the injectors are out, we can now take the rocker cover off. And obviously I've already done all the bolts, so it should just lift up, he says. There we go. Okay then, so now that we have the rock cover off, and obviously it means we can access the camshafts now, I was just looking over them, all of the camshaft lobes, and to be honest, they actually look like they're in really, really good condition. I can't see any deep scoring marks or, you know, any signs of excessive wear. So, you know, in my opinion, this engine's probably been pretty well looked after. It hasn't been, you know, revved high when it's been cold. And um, yeah, overall, you know, I'm happy with this. It's, uh, it just goes to show that this engine should, you know, be good for at least another, another 100,000 miles, if not even more. And, um, you know, obviously the timing chain, this thing here, that's the thing that we want to be changing. I've actually checked the chain, and to be honest, there's not really, you know, much um, slack in it 
at all, like there's not any. Um, the top guide seems to be okay, and um, you know, obviously we'll be able to see the rest of it once you take the timing cover off, once you take the, the uh, sump off and everything, the, the conditions of the other chain. But this is really just a preventative maintenance thing, you know, I do not want to have to replace the time and change when this thing is you know got a few inches of slack in it's slapping around everywhere you know i want to do this when it's still in good condition you know before it fails so you know that's that's what i'm going to be doing um but yeah so far overall looking pretty good i will be actually putting the rocker cover back on temporarily not you know tightening any of the bolts now i'm literally just sitting it on top just to keep any dirt out of the cylinder head um, until we get to the stage where we are actually going to be replacing the timing chains. And I was thinking about removing the high pressure fuel pump as well. Um, it's not necessary, you can just loosen the two bolts that hold it in place. Now there is still one thing that I do need to do though. It's removing the washers from the bottom of the injectors. So on the injectors themselves, there is a copper washer that should sit on just there and uh, they've actually came off of the injectors and they're still down in the injector well so i need to try and fish them out somehow but yeah i'll do that in my own time i need to try and find a tool to extract them out okay then so i'm just going to wrap this up now i want to thank you guys for watching please stay tuned for the next part where i begin to replace the timing chains please give this video a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you haven't already done so and i'll see you guys in that next video peace Oh, 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 oh,